So we are going to talk about Euler's criterion, which is the useful method for determining whether a number is a quadratic residue mod p. We're going to do that using indices relative to primitive roots. So if you aren't familiar with that idea, I've left a link in the description that you can check out. The start of this proof is going to come from Fermat's little theorem, which says that x to the p minus 1 is always congruent to 1 mod p. If we subtract 1 on both sides, we can write that as x to the p minus 1 minus 1 is congruent to 0 mod p. The important thing here is that if p is an odd prime, which means any prime greater than 2, we know that p minus 1 is going to be even, which means the exponent of this x here is even. It's the square of some number. And that means that this expression on the left is actually a difference of squares. And we can factor it as such. We can write it as x to the p minus 1 over 2 minus 1 times x to the p minus 1 over 2 plus 1. And that's going to be congruent to 0 mod p. Now when we say that a number is congruent to 0 mod p, what that means is it has to be a multiple of p. And if p is a prime number, then for this expression to be a multiple of that prime number, one of these two expressions has to be a multiple of p. So we know that either x to the p minus 1 over 2 minus 1 is congruent to 0 mod p, in which case this first expression is a multiple of p, or x to the p minus 1 over 2 plus 1 is congruent to 0 mod p, in which case this second expression is a multiple of p. Now, we can simplify these expressions a little bit by adding 1 on this first congruence. So we get x to the p minus 1 over 2 is congruent to 1 mod p. And then for the second one, we can subtract 1. So we get x to the p minus 1 over 2 is congruent to negative 1 mod p. So when we have any number x that isn't a multiple of p, once we factor for Ma's little theorem, we see that one of these two congruences has to be true. Now because x is not a multiple of p, we know that we can describe x in terms of its index relative to some primitive root g. So we're going to talk about that and how it relates to the two congruences that we have here. First, let's think about what would happen if x were a quadratic residue mod p. In that case, we know that the log base g of x, the index of x, would have to be even. And if it's even, that means we can write it as 2 times some integer k. So that means that we can write x as congruent to g to the power of 2k mod p by the definition of an index relative to g. So if x has an even index, it's congruent to g to the power of 2k, let's look at what happens if we take x to the power of p minus 1 over 2, the expression we have right here. Well, we know mod p, we can substitute instead g to the power of 2k in for x. Then we have to the power of p minus 1 over 2. But from here, we see a 2 and a divided by 2. Those are going to cancel out. And what we're left with is g to the power of k and then to the power of p minus 1. But by Fermat's little theorem, we know that any number mod p to the power of p minus 1 is always going to be congruent to 1 mod p. So what that's telling us is if x is a quadratic residue, then its index is even. And that means that this 2 and this 2 are going to cancel out, and it's going to be congruent to 1 mod p. So if x is a quadratic residue, this first congruence will always be satisfied. Now on the other hand, let's take a look at what happens if x is a quadratic non-residue. We know that quadratic residues have an even index, but we also know that quadratic non-residues have an odd index, which means the index of x is going to be of the form 2k plus 1, and therefore x will be congruent to g to the power of 2k plus 1. Now let's take a look at x to the p minus 1 over 2. If we substitute in this index, this time we're going to get g to the 2k plus 1, and then to the power of p minus 1 over 2. But notice this time, the exponent is not a multiple of p minus 1, because there's no even number that's going to cancel with this division by 2. And if the exponent is not a multiple of p minus 1, this number cannot be congruent to 1 mod p. We know from earlier that it's going to be congruent to either 1 or negative 1. 
If it's not congruent to 1, therefore, it must be congruent to negative 1 mod p. So if x is a quadratic non-residue mod p, then x to the p minus 1 over 2 is congruent to negative 1 mod p. On the other hand, if x is a quadratic residue, then that expression will be congruent to 1. Notice that this is very similar to the definition of the Legendre symbol that we have up here. If x is a quadratic residue, we get 1. If it's a non-residue, we get negative 1. And in fact, the way that we can write this expression in terms of the Legendre symbol looks like this. x to the p minus 1 over 2 is congruent to x on p mod p. So this single congruence down here gives us the exact same information as we just saw earlier. Take x to the power of p minus 1 over 2. If it's 1, x is a quadratic residue. If it's negative 1, x is a quadratic non-residue. That's what this Legendre symbol is encoding. So this gives us a method for determining whether a number is a quadratic residue mod p. All we have to do is raise it to the power of p minus 1 over 2 and then reduce it mod p. Do we get 1 or do we get negative 1? And that's going to tell us, is it a quadratic residue mod p? And this identity comes from the fact that quadratic residues have even index. And if the index of x is even, then the 2 on the top and bottom is going to cancel, and we're going to get 1 by Fermat's little theorem. Now let's look at an example of applying Euler's criterion to see if a number is a quadratic residue. In particular, we're going to try to figure out, is negative 1 a quadratic residue mod p? Of course, we could also write negative 1 as p minus 1 if we wanted. Now in this case, we know that negative 1 on p, this Legendre symbol, is congruent to negative 1 to the power of p minus 1 over 2 mod p. But we know that negative 1 to some power is always going to be 1 or negative 1. So in fact, because both of these are just 1 or negative 1, this isn't just a congruence, it's actually an equality. So negative 1 on p is going to be equal to negative 1 to the p minus 1 over 2. Our job here is to figure out, is this 1 or negative 1? Well, that's going to depend on whether p minus 1 over 2 is even or odd. Now we know that if p is an odd prime, then p is going to be either 4k plus 1 for some integer k, or 4k plus 3. If p is equal to 4k plus 1, then p minus 1 is 4k. And when we divide that by 2, we're going to get an even number in the exponent. So if p is equal to 4k plus 1, the Legendre symbol, negative 1 on p, is going to be 1. In other words, negative 1 is a quadratic residue mod p. On the other hand, if p is equal to 4k plus 3, then when we do p minus 1, we're going to get 4k plus 2. And then when we divide that by 2, we're going to get 2k plus 1, which is an odd number. Which means if p is equal to 4k plus 3, then we have negative 1 to an odd power. So this Legendre symbol, negative 1 on p, is going to be equal to negative 1. So if p is equal to 4k plus 3, then negative 1 is not a quadratic residue mod p. And just like that, we can use Euler's criterion to determine whether this number is a quadratic residue mod p.